Whether you're talking about battering and frying something you'd never thought about trying before, or whipping up a whole new dish that hails from half a world away, here are the fried foods you need to try before you die. Fries and pickles are perfect plate companions, so why not combine them into one amazing side? Serve your main dish with a side of fried pickles, and you'll find that they just might be even better than fries. You can use any cut of pickles, but make sure you pick a tangy, super crunchy dill pickle. Once they're beer battered and sprinkled with breadcrumbs, then deep fried, seriously, you'll never look back. Plus, they're perfect for dipping in the same sauce as you love with fried fish and chicken wings. Churros are just the right combination of crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. And who doesn't love the combo of cinnamon and sugar? They're particularly perfect if you're looking for something light and tasty to serve after dinner, when everyone's sitting around with a cup of coffee or brandy. No one's really hungry anymore, but you're still craving dessert. That's when you need to try a churro. No summertime weekend is complete without hot dogs, but regular old hot dogs can get a little boring. If you want to serve up something that's familiar yet unique, dig out the deep fryer. If you throw a hot dog into the fryer and cook it until the skin gets super crispy and the casing breaks, you're actually whipping up the New Jersey favorite known as Rippers. Love hot dogs that snap? This is snap to the extreme. Or you could opt for beer battering your hot dog and then frying it, which is also pretty delicious. When it comes to scotch eggs, there are extremes. Get a badly made one and you'll wonder what the fuss is all about. It can be sort of like eating a rubbery tennis ball. But get a proper one and you'll know that this is what frying was invented for. Scotch eggs are basically hard-boiled eggs wrapped in sausage and then deep fried. When it's done right, the entire thing holds together so you get it all in one bite. A crispy exterior, flavorful sausage, and a soft but solid egg all come together to change the way you think about breakfast. Everyone's had a donut, sure, but a beignet isn't your regular donut. You absolutely need to try a New Orleans-style beignet because they're not just a brilliant breakfast. They're brilliant any time of the day, particularly with a cup of coffee. Where a donut tends to be dense, these are flaky, light, and pillowy. Well, beignets, uh -huh. got a fresh batch just waiting for you. <laughs> we'll keep them coming till I pass out. They're also usually covered with a healthy coat of powdered sugar, so bring a napkin and plan on eating more than one. The idea of deep-fried butter is certainly an artery-clogging nightmare for anyone who cares about their health in the least. We're not saying you should eat it all the time, but you should definitely give it a try. It's not just a stick of fried butter, it's actually butter that's been whipped until it's light and fluffy, then frozen and coated in a layer of dough. It's only then that it's deep fried and it's heavenly. Don't think of it as biting into a stick of butter. Think of it as a dough ball with a soft, melty, buttery center. It's actually sort of similar to a croissant, with the kind of crunch you only get from something that's fried. Fried green tomatoes are absolutely a southern classic. If you're anywhere outside of the American South, though, they sound a little weird and there's a good chance you've never had the chance to try one. Look at those fried green tomatoes. <laughs> if you can find a comfort food restaurant that serves them up, do yourself a favor and put in an order. If you can't find them in a restaurant, just make them yourself. They're easy and they're absolutely a fried food you need to try before you die. As the name suggests, they're made with green tomatoes that aren't ripe yet. The green tomatoes have a firm texture and slightly sour taste that pairs extremely well with the crunchy fried coating. Think of them like oversized fried pickles, but maybe even better. Rosettes are traditional Scandinavian cookies, originally served around Christmas time. They're delicate deep-fried creations that look more like something you'd hang on the tree rather than eat. They're as delicious as they are delicate, and everyone should try them at least once. And you can definitely make them at home with the help of a special rosette iron that gets heated, half-coated in batter, then fried. If you want to spend a lazy afternoon making cookies one at a time, dusting them with sugar, and sharing something extra special at dessert, these are the cookies for you. Selling the idea of a vegetarian meal to a die-hard carnivore can be tough, but it doesn't have to be. If you're looking for a vegetarian dish that's packed with flavor and spice and has all the firmness and bite of a burger, give falafel a try. I stopped to get a falafel. Falafel has been around for centuries. It's a traditional food commonly seen in the Mediterranean, and while it was first made with fava beans and chickpeas, these days it's most commonly just the chickpeas. They're soaked, ground, and seasoned, then shaped into balls and deep fried. Done right in super hot oil, you get a crispy outside and a firm but not oily inside. They're a flavorful, hearty main dish that's guaranteed to satisfy even the most skeptical meat eater. Serve with pitas, garnish with whatever veggies you like, and add a spicy sauce to top it all off you'll have a meat-free meal that won't get any arguments. Who doesn't love mac and cheese? If you thought it was good on its own, you'll really love all that cheesy, gooey pasta once it's been deep-fried. If you can't find it on a menu near you, you can always fry it up at home. In fact, it's a great use for leftover mac and cheese. The trick is to use mac and cheese that's been chilled so it stays firm during frying. Take it out of the fridge and form it into balls or cut it into slices. Add some batter or breading, then toss your mac and cheese balls in the deep-fryer. 
It really is that easy. And instead of that leftover mac and cheese with the questionable texture, you'll have delicious deep fried nuggets of cheesy goodness. Peanuts are a great snack, but the shells can be a bit annoying. It's not just that they're a ton of work, but they're messy too. There's a solution, deep fried peanuts. And yes, you fry them in the shell and everything turns out edible. Sounds too good to be true, right? It's not. Deep fried peanuts are popular in pockets of the US, particularly in the Carolinas. When the peanuts are deep fried, the shell stays crunchy but is safe to eat. Really, it sounds weird, but you really should try them. And you can absolutely make them at home with a handful of regular shell-on peanuts thrown in your own deep fryer, preferably with peanut oil. Anyone who's ever seen a clip from Hell's Kitchen knows that risotto is a big deal. It's challenging to make, and once you make it, there's another challenge. What do you do with the leftovers? Because let's be honest, there's only so much risotto a family can eat. That's where arancini comes in. Arancini is a traditional Sicilian dish that likely came first from the Arabian world. It's delicious, and it's something everyone should taste at least once, whether you make it yourself or order it from your favorite Italian restaurant. It's essentially leftover risotto shaped into balls, then deep fried. There are also fillers added for extra flavor, and there's no right or wrong way to fill them. Pack your risotto around some cheese or ham and add some spices. It's not just a great way to use up the risotto, but other leftovers too. Toss them in some batter, fry them up, and you've got a super creative meal with no waste. You've probably had fried dough, right? But you probably haven't had zalabia, a Lebanese version of fried dough that's traditionally made from fermented dough and flavored with anise and sesame seeds. If you like licorice, you'll like zalabia. Even if you're not a licorice fan, though, give it a try. The anise flavor in zalabia is incredibly mild, and they smell as good as they taste. The only catch is that if you make them yourself, you want to make them right before you eat them. That's all right, because once you smell the sweet frying dough, you're not going to want to wait. Salads can get kind of boring, even the fun ones like caprese salads. But if you can mix that tired salad with something a little more exciting, like mozzarella sticks, that might change. If you're looking for a more exciting take on salad, then deep-fried caprese is something you'll definitely want to try. It's got all the things you love about a caprese salad, but deep-fried. And you know that makes every salad taste better. It's even pretty easy to make this one yourself if you like. Just scoop the innards out of small tomatoes, fill with mozzarella cheese, cover them in batter, and fry. Deep-fried caprese balls are pretty much the perfect bite, especially if they're served with a balsamic dipping sauce. They'll take a little time to make, sure, but two or three per person is plenty for an appetizer, and they'll definitely become a family favorite. Everyone loves ice cream, and fried ice cream is even better. The warm and crispy shell surrounding the still-cold ice cream creates a creamy and delicious dessert that everyone should try at least once. You can often find this delight at your local Mexican restaurant. But if you can't, it's definitely possible to make it at home, and you definitely should try. Just scoop the ice cream into balls and pre-freeze them before frying so they're nice and hard. Roll the frozen ice cream balls in a mixture of crushed corn flakes and cinnamon, then drop them in hot oil. After about 10 seconds, you'll have a new favorite dessert to serve to guests. The classic fried dessert struffoli is traditionally made in Italy around Christmas, but there's no reason this can't be enjoyed at any time of the year. It's essentially marble-sized dough balls, carefully rolled, deep-fried, covered in honey, then arranged into a cone or wreath. They're great for parties, and they look fantastic displayed as part of a tablescape. But more than that, they're great for making when you have help in the kitchen. Rolling out the tiny dough balls of struffoli takes a long time and a lot of work, but it's the perfect job for kids who want to help in the kitchen. It's time-consuming but not difficult, and the experience of making it together will be a memory you'll all enjoy. Deep-fried foods have a reputation for being unhealthy, but there's no rule that says you can't deep fry one of the healthiest foods out there. Avocados are high in vitamins and nutrients. They're full of healthy fats, and they can even help lower your cholesterol. So why not deep fry them? Just coat slices or spears in egg and breadcrumbs and dunk them in the fryer. Leave them there until they float. If you love avocados, you can already imagine this is one seriously delicious side dish. Whip up a healthy yogurt-based dip to go with them, and you'll never have an avocado go to waste again. Deep-fried pizza sounds like a trendy new idea that someone came up with after a few too many beers. But according to some pizza chefs, they've been deep-frying pizza for generations because it's amazing. It isn't exactly what you think, and it's not as simple as throwing a whole pizza into a deep-fryer. They essentially make the dough, shape it, then fry it in a pan. Then you add the toppings of your choice and serve it. The deep-frying method gives you a pizza crust that's light, chewy, and infused with the flavor of whatever oil you're using. Opt for olive oil, don't go overboard on the toppings, and you can absolutely enjoy a deep-fried pizza like generations of Italian families have. When most people think of Irish cuisine, they think potatoes, but it's not all just mash and chips. There's boxty too, and if you haven't tried this potato dish, you're missing out on a brilliant way to use up leftover mashed potatoes. We've all had leftover mashed potatoes in the fridge, and we've all experienced the disappointment of reheating them. 
Boxty is here to fix that. Mix some grated raw potato into your mashed potato until it's firm enough to form into a patty. Add some buttermilk if needed. Then just fry in a thin layer of butter or oil until they're golden. Top with anything from sour cream and chopped onions to a fried egg. Because they're great for any meal of the day, and you'll never throw out mashed potatoes again. You might even make too much on purpose, just so you can have these super versatile potato pancakes the next day. Zeppole are basically traditional Italian donuts, but they are so much more than that. They're often made to celebrate St. Joseph's Day, which also happens to be Father's Day in Italy. They're traditionally made with a yeast-based dough that can be shaped into a ball or into a fritter. And that's where the fun starts. They're not just plain or powdered sugar donuts. They're traditionally filled with custard, a pastry cream, or candied fruit. And then they get the powdered sugar treatment. Of course, if you're making them at home, there's no limit to the sweetness you can add. Cherries, chocolate chips, whipped cream, and sweet ricotta are all completely acceptable when it comes to bringing a little bit of Italy into your kitchen. If you say you love Italian food, you should also be able to say you've tried these very traditional treats. Deep fried turkey may feel like just another food fad that came and went before you ever tried it. Most people never cook turkey outside of Thanksgiving, and the idea of deep frying a whole bird might feel a little dangerous. Why risk ruining the turkey on the one day of the year when you eat it? Oh my god, they're counting down! But here's the thing, it's totally worth it. There are, of course, a whole list of safety precautions that need to be taken when you do this, but it's definitely worth picking up a turkey outside of Thanksgiving and giving it a shot. Do it right and it's delicious. It's moist on a level that roast turkeys just aren't. And that crispy, crunchy skin that everyone loves? There's a lot of that. And now that there are fryers made specifically for frying turkeys indoors, you really don't have any excuse not to try it, do you? It might just change your Thanksgiving traditions forever. There are some words that seem like they should never be next to deep fried, and strawberry is definitely one of those words. But don't knock it until you've tried it, because they're delicious. Getting them right takes a little bit of effort. The batter should be thin, but not so runny it doesn't cling to the berry. The fry time should be short, and you'll have to eat them as soon as you make them. But when you do, you'll find that if there's a way to make strawberries better, this is it. Move over, chocolate-covered strawberries. You don't have anything on these. They might just be your new go-to romantic sweet treat. Sweet and juicy in the middle, crispy on the outside, dusted with powdered sugar, it's a summer afternoon in a single bite. Yes, leche frita translates from Spanish to fried milk, but it's actually a bit more complicated than that. This traditional Spanish dessert is more accurately described as milk thickened with cornstarch, flour, and sugar, and simmered with spices like cinnamon. It's then chilled overnight, sliced, battered, and deep fried. In Spain, it's often made with regular cow's milk, but there's also a Chinese version that uses coconut milk instead. It's sweet and unique, and it's one of those things you'll just need to try to be able to describe. Some like it cold, some like it hot, some like it with coffee, and some with ice cream. It's versatile and just a little strange. Plus, what's better than the look on a guest's face when you say you're serving up some fried milk for dessert? The look on their face when they taste it, of course. Sure, potato-based fries are great, but what about pumpkin fries? Given just how popular the pumpkin spice latte is, it's safe to say that there are a ton of people out there who would appreciate all that pumpkin goodness served up alongside a burger. Pumpkin fries are super easy to make. Just slice a peeled pumpkin into fry-shaped spears, then deep fry. Load them up with all the pumpkin spice you could want, and that's it. And if that's not delicious enough, you'll also need to save the seeds. Deep fry those, too, and you'll not only have a delicious side, but a yummy snack for later. What's better than a creative side dish, pumpkin spice, and an after-dinner snack, all rolled up into one little pumpkin? When you're talking pie and you're looking for something different from the fruit-based pies you're used to, pecan pie is a great choice. It's full of nutty brown sugar, caramel goodness, and it's the pie to make when you're looking for something that's not your traditionally fruity dessert. If you love it, though, you need to go just one step further and deep fry it. The easiest way to do this is to break the pie into smaller pieces from the start. Instead of one big pie, make little folded hand pies. And then deep fry. The crunch is amazing, and the deep fryer really brings out the earthy, nutty flavor of the pecans. Serve them warm with some powdered sugar sprinkled on the top, and you'll never want regular old pecan pie again. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more MASH videos about your favorite foods are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.